Learn to improve conversions and generate more leads with the video podcast at marketingoptimization.tv. Hi, and welcome to the Marketing Optimization Podcast with Oz Designs. I'm your host, Alex Harris, and today we're chatting with Marie from Conversion Excel. To get started, what would be your definition of optimization and why is it beneficial? Well, um, when you talk about optimization, you're really talking about um, getting more revenue uh, per the amount of traffic that you have. Essentially, you're talking about getting more money. So I think that's the main benefit of, of optimization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you work at a Conversion Excel agency, and uh, you, I guess you've been working there for a number of years. Can you just explain you know, what, do you, what do you guys do? What do you do there? How's, uh, you know, uh, how's it working with Pep? <laughs> yeah, Pep is really nice to work with, very straightforward, as if you have seen any of his presentations. Um, so I have been with the company two years now. Um, I'm running one of the one of the CRO teams here, so essentially everything from doing research, uh, client meetings, building the whole testing plan, and so forth, and coming up with testing ideas as well. Um, we've got a pretty small team, uh, but we're very focused on only doing CRO, and it's 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 very it's a very pleasant job, you know. Um, every day is different. You need to prioritize, reprioritize all the time because optimization is really things change overnight. And if you're running a test on a high traffic site, then you need to be volatile in terms of uh, making changes, calling treatments, setting up new ones. So it's a very um, engaging job, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. We had the, the chance to meet uh, at Conversion Excel Live in, in Texas and then again in Vegas at the Conversion Conference and we had yes. some chances to talk and I love meeting other like-minded people who do conversion rate optimization because there's a lot of people who run agencies or, or do this and they kind of speak about it but they're not practitioners and you're, uh, in your case you run the CRO uh, department with uh, Conversion Excel and you are working on big clients, small clients. Can you kind of work through how you manage CRO projects for your clients and things like that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I think that's a very crucial part because what we do is that we follow processes, meaning that um, with every single client, we have a fixed process that we go through. We start off with doing heavy research. Um, well, I'm sure if you, if you were at Vegas or, um, or, at, uh, or in Austin, you heard Beb speak about the research Excel model that we use. So basically what is our main focus is that in order to bring high value gains for our customers, the research has, has to be done properly. And that is always the first step. So we always go research, then we build up out the testing plan, and then we actually start off with optimization. So it's, it's kind of everything. If you don't have a process, then it's pretty chaotic and it's essentially you will start testing random stuff. But if you have a process that you go through and it's iterative, meaning that you always come back to the research, analyzing what is going on on the site. And even if you have a test that doesn't win, you again, you go look at heat maps, see what was the problem and do a version two of the same treatment. So it may be also that the execution is causing the problems. So it's all about following the process and, and doing it iteratively so that you have kind of a continuous optimization plan. Yeah, and actually I learned a lot of this from interviewing people like Pep and you know, following along with the Conversion Excel blog and, and, and yeah. implementing a lot of this stuff myself. So you may have a system that works for you today, but you want to explore how other people do their process as well, learning from really the best and how other people do this because a lot of people do a lot of the same different methodologies, but everybody kind of does them in their different way. So you, can you take us through what Conversion Excel is, what type of data that, and insight that you get to form these hypotheses and so forth? You mean the Research Excel model, right? Yes. yes. Framework. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So essentially what it is about, it's about collecting insights and insights that really matter. So at Research Excel, we have six different um, data sources that we look at. So we, of course, we start off with heuristic analysis. Um, so there's no com comparison to human-led evaluation. Uh, we gather our team actually around the sa very same table here. Um, we have a screen right here that, from which we go through the site, go through all the key pages of the sales funnel, and es essentially we're evaluating if if the content at the at the page specific page is relevant, if it's clearly pre presented, if there are any friction points any credibility issues. So essentially we're evaluating what's wrong with the picture. Are we giving our customers the right motivation and the right direction to go forward? So that's the first step. 
and and the key, and the clue here is that we're doing it in teams because um, you know websites are very subjective. It's very they're very visual. It's very easy to draw subjective conclusions that I don't like this color. I don't like the way the header looks or something like that. But that's why we do it in teams always. Um, so that's the first part. Um, the second part that we go to is that we do qualitative research. Uh, we do user testing. So we, we build out specific scenarios for customers to go through. And then we look at what they actually did on the site and they speak about everything out loud. So we usually from, uh, I'd say, five to ten user tests, you already start to see the patterns form out. And that is very valuable. Those are user experience um, kind of issues, places where they get stuck if they cannot find a specific product, if they cannot find the newsletter sign up, for example. So those are very kind of straightforward things that you can fix. Um, at the same time, what we also do is customer surveys. So with the customer surveys, the key is to ask your most recent purchasers, people whose experience on the site is still fresh, and they will tell you what makes them tick, what is their motivation to buy. Essentially, those are the insights that you can then use to, to formulate the hypothesis, and they will help you formulate your own value proposition. It's very often the case that we see value propositions on clients' websites that are the right ones. They talk about the competitive advantage, but they use different wording than the actual customers do. So um, from, from the customer survey, we have user testing. We also have heuristic analysis. Then the fourth one is exit surveys, asking people on a specific page of the sales funnel, what is the, their, this immediate feedback? What is stopping them from completing a purchase right now? What is this one thing holding them back? So that's this really kind of, they type it in, they're frustrated, they cannot find the call to action, they cannot find shipping information, whatever that is. So it's really, this is, this is the whole qualitative part of it. And, and of course, from the quantitative, uh, we look at Google Analytics, um, do the segmentation, do all the ana analysis there, and we also look at heat maps. So, and a very long explanation, but those are the six data entry points. And then, when it all, what it all comes down together with is that we pull insights from all this data because you know we have all a lot of data, but it really matters is are the insights, mm -hmm. and then if the insights are backed up by let's say someone said something in the customer survey, you found a problem in Google Analytics on that specific page, and you also found in user testing that people had problems there, then you get really to this hypothesis that actually has value that has an impact, so, and that has a high potential for an uplift. So this research Excel model, it's, it's all about making the data actionable, bringing out the insights and formulating hypotheses based on the insights that you found. So it's, it's a very thorough research model, and, um, and we always start off with that. No, I'm glad you went through it in detail, because this is, uh, this is like looking over the shoulder into basically what we do every day in our lives. People yeah. wonder how much goes into this, and it's, it's a lot of work. Watching the user testing videos, going through the heat maps, pulling together a hypothesis, putting together that foundation, that initial research is the foundation for all of your tests going forward, because eventually you're gonna get the diminishing returns, you're gonna have a harder time finding bigger wins, and you're gonna to have to go back to that original research, those fresh insights from those fresh purchases, that specific qualitative uh, and quantitative data, that really will lead you down the right path of your prioritization of all your tests going forward. So I'm glad you went into detail of it because people don't realize how much work goes into this in order to get the right exactly. results. Exactly, exactly, yeah. It, it is a lot of work and mm -hmm. it's a lot of heavy lifting, you know, that has to be done before you can actually start testing. It's the same rule as spend 90% of your time planning and preparing and then 10% of your effort into actually setting up a treatment. Because mm -hmm. everybody, you know, everybody can come up with the testing idea, but coming up with the right testing idea, something that really will have an impact, mm -hmm. that's the one thing that matters. Yeah. Now, now we have enough data to build out a, a great hypothesis and prioritize our tests. What would be yes. some, uh, you know, maybe top three tips? We have enough data, we're ready to like redesign our site, redesign our landing pages. What would be some top tips to increase your conversion rate from that data? Yeah, so one of the things you mentioned is, is redesigning the site. Um, this is something that we would recommend highly against. 
there's no point in redesigning everything at once because then you don't know what actually caused the impact. Because still those are insights, those are hypotheses that you formulated from insights. You don't know yet if those are working. So what we would do is that we would, um, as you mentioned, we would prioritize them. And then essentially our analysts, they would wireframe those hypotheses in real life. So they would, they would visualize how it would be executed on the site. The designers would give it the look and feel, and then it would be set up and optimizedly. So that's, that's the process we go through. We wouldn't do a radical redesign or something like that. Though it may be required for some clients for whom there's, um, there's not enough traffic or there's a branding change or they have been purchased by someone else. So they're going through a more radical change inside the company itself. I love approach that. I do a lot of e-commerce work. So a lot of times in the summer, we're doing this iterative testing to get uh, the conversion rates as high as possible, you know, potentially to eventually redesign it. But you're right. If you just go into a, and just redesign it, more than likely you're not going to know what works and what doesn't. Exactly. So you're kind of shooting in the dark um, to, to put up a new site. Of course, if you have a, a terrible site and it's just not working completely, maybe a redesign will certainly help. But just recently, I was just working with a client and they just redid their site before the previous last holiday season and they actually saw the conversion rates go down. So it's pretty typical if you don't do this iterative approach, you're not going to know it works or not. Yeah, yeah. There's also one thing that if you if you implement a redesign, then it may not be only the redesign that will have an impact on your conversion rate. It may be still that there are some technical bugs left on the site. So maybe your redesign is actually performing great, but within the first month's time, it takes time to find those bugs and fix them. And they are the ones that are bringing your conversion rate down in the first month after it has been implemented. And the second could be if you're doing something very radical, then maybe your returning customers are just not used to it yet. They may need more time to adjust. So that may also cause a conversion rate drop in the beginning. And when you're figuring out the areas to prioritize, you know, what, what, where to tweak first um, and second before you um, maybe implement tests, is there a way, that, uh, like a, a cheat sheet, a way to kind of figure out where your prioritization starts within a new client's website? Yes, yes. It's, it's actually very straightforward. Um, one of the things that matters is ease of implementation because opportunity cost is always out there. So if it will take you one month to implement a test, then probably you should maybe focus on something else at, the fir at first. Um, the second thing that you need to look at is, is potential for gain. And this is the more important one. This is the one that you should, you should focus on. And how it can be done is that essentially you're looking at your checkout funnel and, and if you implement a treatment on the checkout page, it will most certainly have a higher impact um, than a treatment on the home page because it's just that much closer to actual conversions. So if you get an uplift on the checkout page, it will directly influence your overall purchases. So it's really about um, the, higher, the higher the potential is the more further down the sales funnel. And of course, the hypothesis will also matter. So if the hypothesis is really backed out backed up by all those six data entry points that I talked about before, um, then most certainly it will have a higher impact than something that is just guessed by the heuristic analysis or, or just su suggested by two people during user testing. So it's really the, the amount of proof you have, how much down in the sales funnel the, the test is going to be implemented, and ease of implementation finally as well. That's a, that's a really key insight. Uh, opportunity cost, how fast does it take to actually implement yes. the prioritization of, of those tests? Uh, because I know my clients, they don't like to wait too long. So sometimes the, the longer tests that take to implement, we're, we'll work on those in tandem with our easier, quick wins. Um, and so exactly. Forth. Uh, great point for sure. Uh, you know, so let's talk about, um, you know, now uh, we, we have the, the research, uh, we have our plan to start testing. Uh, actually implementing those tests. Do you have any insight into the, pra the other practitioners of how they can run more successful tests, setting up the test properly, getting the mindset of the, the client in place, uh, really any of those perspectives from an agency? Well, getting the mindset of the client in place, that is something that should be done before the whole optimization package will start. So that's, that's, um, that's before even the research phase. That's explaining to the client that optimization, it's an ongoing process. It's not something that you can take, let's optimize my site now in six months time and then cut it. 
it's, it's a continuous pro process. Your external environment is changing all the time. Your own business is evolving. So essentially, optimization is something that you need to keep in your um, kind of company's processes all the time, even if it's, it can be done externally for some period of time, but it has to be done then internally afterwards. So it's really about having the mindsets in place before you start doing anything else. Um, and, and I'm sorry, what was the second question? As far as uh, implementing the A-B tests, any best practices mm -hmm. or things to uh, look out for when you're actually setting up those tests? Quality assurance. That's really everything. Like, yeah. uh, if, you, if you set up a treatment, um, and, and very often it's the case that it's told that don't check your test results, because otherwise you may be tempted to close them too early, uh, but at least First of all, before you set a treatment live, do very thorough quality assurance. There's, uh, there are tools out there like Browser Stack, for example, that will allow you to look at the treatment from different browsers, different devices, and so forth. And then once you have implemented the treatment, don't ever do it at the end of the workday. Do it in the beginning and have it running real time on your screen so that you see that if after seven hours there are zero purchases for one and let's say 50 for the other one, then that's a scary number. That's, that means that there may be a usability issue there. You don't want to discover it two days in. Um, yeah, so those two things are the key ones that you need to look out for. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, you know, I don't know how you guys run your tests on a schedule. Me, um, you know, I'm, I'm basically the only one who implements tests for my team. But I tend to do it on a schedule kind of like the same day uh, each week for each different client is different. But I, I start really early in the morning and I kind of... Uh, you know, before people are on the site and then, uh, you know, introduce a test and kind of, you know, QA it in a, at a, a certain segment of the audience and then slowly release it um, throughout the day to make sure it's kind of working right. Is that kind of like the way you guys are handling tests? Uh, yes and no. It's, it's in a way our advantage because we're, uh, we're located in North Europe in Estonia. So that means that we're ahead of time. So our working day is during your nighttime, meaning if we set up a treatment on a big U.S. e-commerce store, um, that has a lot of traffic, then during that period of time when we will be setting it up, um, the client will have less traffic as well. So it's very beneficial for us. And we can also monitor it. So, um, But yeah, I would say that's the right approach and then really monitoring it right after it has been launched for the next couple of hours. It's, it's just great to, to meet other people who uh, who are really, you know, taking uh, the great content the, that you guys are producing in Conversion to Sell and, and turning it into real results on, on client stuff. Because, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I've been doing this for, for a long time. You don't, you don't meet many people who, who learn a lot of these advanced tactics as fast as I've seen really your staff. Because I've met almost all of your staff and everyone's very smart and they've uh, obviously taken a lot from, from Pep. But... Um, you know, I commend Pep all the time of how fast he's advancing some of the stuff that we do. And a lot of that's based on the Conversion Excel blog. So uh, maybe yeah. um, you want to briefly just talk about all the great content and, and the conferences that you guys put together? Yeah, sure. Um, we do run two conferences a year, uh, one in North Europe um, during the summertime. Actually, one just was last weekend, um, a three-day conference, it lasts during the, week, uh, during the weekend, and it's in a format um, that people are taking outside of the city. So everybody flies into one city, um, they take a bus, and they're taken to a hotel which is nearby the city but outside, meaning that nobody leaves the conference during the three-day period, and everybody gets to share their experience, network, and of course there's great content. So the, the speakers, they really are top notch. We don't do any multi-tracks. It's only one track for everybody. So that allows us to really select um, the people who are speaking at our conferences. And the second conference that we do is Conversion Excel Live, and that's in, um, that's in Austin during the springtime. Um, so if, if you follow our blog, conversionxl.com, um, that's a lot of free content there. And if you follow it, you will definitely receive the the invites for, uh, for both of those uh, conferences. And those are really very valuable ones. They're not beginner level, they're uh, medium to high level. So I really do recommend them. Yeah, absolutely. I was in uh, Austin, Texas uh, just this past year and uh, I will be there again um, in the springtime of 2016. So you definitely yes. want to look out for uh, Conversion Excel Live uh, in Texas uh, in, if you're in North America or uh, Elite Camp if uh, you're in Europe uh, or the Estonia area. Definitely yeah. 
highly recommend going because uh, you know if you love talking about conversion rate optimization, you can go and talk with advanced people specifically about what's going on in your business, how to get better results, and it will specifically help you get to that next level in your business as well. Um, so uh, let's let's uh, wrap this up by giving the audience maybe some some practical tips. What, what would you tell optimizers? If they were starting a new client or a new campaign, what would you tell them? How could they take their conversion rates or their growth really to that next level? Yeah, so what I would do for that is that I would build out the process from the beginning mm -hmm. in order to have sustainable growth for the clients. Mm -hmm. That means that you just don't aim for the small gains that you can get with uh, testing so, some sort of uh, low hanging fruit mm -hmm. by things that are immediately visible, that those are broken on the site but building more for um, having a research process that gives you the hypothesis that you can test for two years in a row, meaning really maximizing the website's potential, maximizing the conversion rate for the website, let's say in, in one year, two years, even three years. So it's more about the long-term uh, commitment mm -hmm. when it comes to conversion rate optimization. Thank you for watching the Marketing Optimization Podcast with Alex Designs. Please remember to subscribe to all of the videos in my YouTube channel. Thank you.